Coming up this week on Stage to the Cage. I couldn't imagine my, my life without Leo and Freddie, if I'm honest. It's nice to see de definitively that I'm getting fitter, getting lighter, getting stronger. That's what I've got to lose. That's what you've got to lose. I'm going to have to chop the dick off. <laughs> He treats it as if it's his full-time job and he treats it like a professional should do, so it's good fun. Send him back to X Factor. You need an X Factor after this. Look, <laughs> hear that? X Factor, me. I literally can see three of you. I can see three of you. I need to start training more. So we have a date, November the 4th. We have a venue, the AO Arena in Manchester, and we have our two guys, Jake Quickenden and Paul Smith, putting themselves through 10 months of hell, sacrifice and preparation to make the walk to fight each other. But the question is, what motivates both of them to do this, to make that walk into the octagon cage and to fight? What are they fighting for? One clear motivation for both of them is their families, the people who know them and who they love the most. Both want to inspire them and show their kids that anything is possible if you put your mind to it. I'm gonna check your heart rate. Ready? Let's have a listen. Let's have a listen. Yeah, healthy. Healthy heart. Leo, listen. Be like this on the night. Ready? What'd you do? Fight. Fight. Get your guard up. I think becoming a dad has changed quite a lot in me, if I'm honest. Like, the main thing is this, I'm just not as selfish. I don't think of myself. I always think of the kids first. Um, and that's probably the, the best bit of growth I've had. I feel a better person for having kids. I feel, um, I couldn't imagine my, my life without Leo and Fred, if I'm honest. Hey, should we just let daddy clean up? The thing I love most about Jake is the fact that he's such an amazing dad. Like, he honestly puts Leo before anything, like even me, and he would do absolutely anything for him. Like, Leo genuinely is as well. <laughs> So we actually met in Ibiza, which is why we got married there. Jake was on a lad's holiday and I was on a girl's holiday and we kind of just like crossed paths when we was at Pikes, which is like, not even a club, it's like a little bar. Couldn't take your eyes off of it. Yeah, couldn't take your eyes off of it. Um, and yeah, we met up a couple of times whilst we was in Ibiza and the rest is kind of like history. I met him when I went up to Leeds when we came back and then met him a few times, and then he kind of moved down, and now we've got Leo, and we're married. That was it. So that was the fourth one, the frame's obviously broken, so now the third has just been stuck in one of the vases. Well, there, Leo again, me and Fred, and another one of Fred, and a tape measure. I don't know what's been getting measured in here. I could give you a list of things that are annoying, but narrowing it down to the top three, I would say... Three? Three, yes. Three. You only asked for one. I heard it there, you only asked for one. So number one would be Jake always thinks he's right. So whenever we have an argument, it's like Jake's way or no way. Number two, relating it to boxing, that he's so competitive to the fact that like, if we were to play a card game and he was to lose, that's like end game. He just like can't deal with that. And I would say number three is that he's super messy. Do you know why I'm like that? That's because of my upbringing. Is it your dad's? My dad was like that. My dad was a massive influence on my life, like on my sport, on the way I was competitive, on the way he always pushed me to be better. He always accepted if I did lose and, and said, you brush yourself off and you go again, as long as you're giving 100%. And, yeah, my dad was a real motivator. So I guess I've taken from my dad is to just kind of be understanding but motivating. And that's what I'll do. I'll never push anything on the kids. Like, Freddie's loving football at the minute, so that's great. But tomorrow he might love something else. And then you just support him in that way, don't you? So I'm going to be like my dad was, and he was a friend and a dad. Dad just said some weird TikTok things. Oh, it's like this. You want my Leo? Oh, I want your cat. Oh, that's all you cracked. So okay, you do, you do it. Leo, do it. Oh, no, Fred's gonna do it. Go on then. Leo, do it to Leo. Oh, no, no. Leo, do it. Oh, my God, he did. That's a hard boil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
What are you doing that for? I want to eat that, so to make sure you don't put it in the Why do you give my Is mine hand boiled? No, Oh, no! Oh, my God, yeah. so... Yeah, well done! Yeah, I think mine. Done. Hello, I've seen him do the one fight, which he absolutely smashed. Um, and I know he's going to train so hard and he just won't want to lose. So I'm actually not too worried about it, to be honest. He's like, he's like a human. He just chills. He's got a life of luxury. Everyone treats him like a king. And so it should be. And so it should be. I think this day and age, people don't want to work hard for things. And getting in the cage is something that you have to work hard at. But hopefully with hard work, I'll get to a point where I'm pretty good. What's up? How many is that? Eight. Eight. Oh. He does it all the time, same. I think it's just, just his favourite number. Eight or two. Eight or two. Do, what do you want to do? If Leo asked me why I decided to get in the cage and have a fight, I'd just tell him because I like to step outside my comfort zone. I like to test myself and try new things and show him that anything's possible if you want to do it with hard work. So that's what I'll say, just never stay in your comfort zone because you don't learn anything from it. Um, step outside your comfort zone and test yourself. Um, we don't always just put me on the TV, by the way. That doesn't always happen. That's just because I was on Loose Women yesterday and Soph, Soph actually forgot to tape uh, record the last thing I was no, on. No, it, it was a live... Competition. Like a, yeah, a quick live competition. And I thought you would watch it, because, and you never did. No, because it's just the a support like, this is just wasn't there, okay? <laughs> I just didn't feel the support that I needed. I hope you supported me and not Paul for this fight. Oh, maybe. Maybe. I quite, I quite like his jokes. <laughs> He's funnier than you, I would support him. If you've annoyed me that day, maybe. Yeah, you so that's Knock him right. out! <laughs> yeah, I get knocked out and so I jump to Oh, shit! <laughs> We are at uh, the house of Sam McKenzie, aka Science to Health. Uh, and we're doing a, a VO2 max and a fitness test, uh, get my weight checked and stuff like that. To see if I'm uh, see if I'm on the right track. He's done all my uh, nutrition plan and things like that. He's just uh, trying to get my weight down safely. He's very good. So when I first met Paul, I had only watched his online social media video, so I'd never quite got a grasp of. Uh, what type of character I was going to meet. I was actually a bit nervous to meet him. He has got a fantastic work ethic, amazing attitude. I've done this once before and the first time I came I was a little bit scared because I didn't know what to expect and then he gets, his, gets all his gear out and you look like Bane. There's a few different tests we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing a body composition test to check that his body fat is moving in the right direction for making weight. We're going to be checking all of his bloods, so we're looking at all his essential markers for health and performance and then we're gonna do his fitness test to compare the first readings uh, to the second for his VO2 max to check that it's improved. I'm the type of person I like data, I like numbers. I like being able to measure progress. Um, it keeps me on track. Come on, mate, well done, let's go! Whoa. You got it, come on, come on! Yeah. Last 20, Paul, come on, mate, you got it. So the body composition results showed me what I was hoping. Uh, he's up to now, he's lost a stone. Uh, which is fantastic progress since uh, since the new year and I was hoping at this point that the body fat didn't surprisingly as, as my, people might think didn't want it dropping continually I wanted him to have maintained for a while so we let all the uh, metabolic markers reset to baseline him have a proper good recovery um, and feel uh, fully, fully replenished during his training and, and it looks like he's done a good job of that That was better than I expected. I felt great on the on the treadmill when we were going. It started getting tough, but then my son came on and that kind of spared me on a little bit. And even after it, when I came off, just getting my breath back and bringing my heart rate down, I felt like I was um, able to recover a lot better. So I think we're definitely definitely doing something right. It's nice to see de definitively that I'm getting fitter, getting lighter, getting stronger. Definitely the best thing I've done is getting Sam and Tom and all the people around me to help me. Being part of a team, I don't think I've ever been part of a team before. My job is a very solitary one, so um, obviously I have people I work closely with at the comedy club and things like that, but being part of that team is um, pretty valuable. Ninety-three point three. So if we wanted to, like, sort of give you a visual representation of this, 
So just that, I've got. So you're going to give me something that's like 17 kilograms? How am I going to get to 90 to 77? Mate. So James, this is uh, we're going to give 17 bags of, of sugar there. That's 17 kil. That's what I've got to lose. That's what you've got to lose. I'm going to have to chop the dick off. <laughs> <laughs> no, no way. 17 kilos. I need to start training more. Well, I'm 35 and I do ache a lot after I've trained. I know tomorrow will be a struggle getting out of bed. So that's quite a scary thought really, isn't it? Because at 21 I could just jump out of bed like a fucking ninja. And now I'm struggling. So yeah, I guess I guess they are I guess that is a bit of a worry, because the last thing I want to do is make Paul train loads and then I get injured. That's, that'll be the worst case scenario, and if I'm the same. Imagine I step on and I lose 17 kilograms and make 77 in like a few days before one of us gets injured, and then we've made the weight and we can't fight. Yeah, hopefully my body will hold up. I'm hoping like the years of keep looking after it means it might. But like my shins are just always bruised. All, all the hair's falling off my legs. I don't know what that's from. <laughs> that's some kicking. I kick that hard, my legs fall, and my hair falls off. <laughs> Ready for those leg kicks. Like you know, chop a tree down. Oh, you're up, you're up. <laughs> but yeah, like it's become a bit of home from home this place and everyone's so sound, like everyone really gets on, so it's totally different with fighting. The support you get is mad. Like, you always find, like, people are asking if you're all right. They share your stuff on Instagram without you asking. Like, it's a bit mad, like, it's a weird... And it's because everyone knows how hard it is. You try and keep people humble, you try and keep them where they... where they, you think they should be, but he, he is... Um, he's, he's standing out, do you know what I mean? And it is... It's not because of what we're doing here, yeah, there'll be a little bit to that, but it'll be mainly because of his attitude, his determination, and what he wants to achieve at the end of it. I seen when it got announced, people were like, why are you letting these two fight? Like, I was like, fuck off, mate. I'm not, I'm not claiming I'm Conor McGregor, do you know what I mean? Like, but why, why can't I have a fight? Why can't I train? I'm going to take it serious. I'm going to train my ass off. Keyboard warriors, they'll never get in the ring, would they? That's Bring that, yeah, that's it. I want that. So go back one step, Jay, go back. Bring that leg to make sure that leg, that right leg gets free first. Now, use your left knee to pull the knee out. Pull his knee out. Now, just get onto your knees, go. Up. Limp arm, body lock. If you remember the ash grip, what we were doing first, yeah, it was the leg there, and then it was posture up and hips in. It's gonna be right hand, 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 yeah. Right hand. We are at um, Charlie Bowling Wrestling. Uh, Charlie is a very accomplished wrestler of Team GB fame. He's uh, very good. It's going for your credentials, Charlie. What's up? There's nothing quite as sexy as putting wrestling boots on. You'll be all right, kid. <laughs> Honestly, my dogs have like, never been in contact with anybody else's dog, so yeah, I, I wouldn't want them bloody ripping, ripping his head off. That would be a terrible, terrible state, wouldn't it? Although he's not, he's going to be doing his first pro fight, he's not a professional athlete, but he treats it as if it's his full-time job and he treats it like a professional should do, so it's good fun. I enjoy it. One of my favourite sessions of the week. You've got to remember as well with that run the party, it only really works if I'm leaning over you. Yeah. If I'm like that, oh, yeah. up. Yeah, go, go, go. Move your feet more, but it is better. Just working on basics. I mean, we've not got a lot of time um, to, you know, be good at everything. So just basic attacks, defenses, and just getting him like sharp, really, ready for for fight there. Cool. 
Off there, fuck off there. You tell me. Good. Yeah. Off there, there. Well, you didn't commit to plan air. You didn't commit to running the bike. Yeah. So I'll commit to it. Okay. I'm not going to tell you when. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it doesn't Five work, if, I, yeah. if there's not enough pressure and I don't go, take it down. Okay. Nice. When you're taking it out, make sure you're not going like that, because then you can kick and turn away. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, make sure. Alex. Yeah. Send him back to. X Factor. You'll <laughs> <laughs> be an X Fighter after this. <laughs> oh, hear that? X Fighter, mate. Fair play to Paul. I think he's a, he's a good opponent. Like, I don't, I'm not a guy that talks shit anyway, so I've got, I'm not going to talk any shit, you know. I respect, I respect him for, for one, he trains anyway, but for doing it, do you know what I mean? Like, he don't need to be doing this, so. Fair fucks to him. I think it's a great opportunity for both of them to bring new eyes to the sport, especially for UK MMA. It gives people the opportunity to see a different side of it. Do you know what I mean? It's not, it's not as barbaric. It's not as brutal. Um, we're not thugs. You know, like is, there is a, there's a science to it. There's a, there's a protocol to it. There's, there's, there's training. There's, there's science back training. Do you know what I mean? It's, uh, it's real. My, my family's everything. So to be away from them is hard work. Um, but it's something that I want to do. It's something that I want to test myself. And uh, the training's going well, man. Like I feel good. I feel good. The rolling's strong, and I'm definitely getting better at rolling. My striking feels good. So, and we're, we're nowhere near the fight yet. So, just taking every day at, at a time, making sure I try and eat before I train. That would be handy. I literally can see three of you. <laughs> I can see three of you, and you're ugly, all three. <laughs> Fucking hell. I can't get my top on. <laughs> it's because they're fucking scared you now about the weight. Nine months ago, it's gonna cut weight. He's got overtime. <laughs> Next time on Stage to the Cage. It's going to be great, great for the UK, especially Octagon to come over here as well. I think the show's great, and Paul's going to make a statement. So, yes, this is a set for Steph Matt's lunch. Look forward to being on the show. Imagine I get to 97 and I have to lose 20 kilograms. That's a 20 kg plate that you put on the bar. I can barely bench press one of them, let alone freaking lose one. If he agrees to do this, he will give his fucking all. I'm confident that he's going to win. So if you don't, fucking don't come home. <laughs> <laughs> do you ever like walk through stuff and like imagine what you do if there's like a gang of lads that start on you? Oi! You! Fucking give us your wallet. Like guys, guys. Everything. Fucking!